Okay, what we're going to talk about here, ideally, quickly, uh, in, a, in a shorter video, right, 15, 20 minutes is my goal, is uh, this concept of, well, we've learned methods, and we need to learn how methods kind of pass data around. And you might say, well, we've already done that. We've already passed data from one point to another into a method and then a method ba data back out of a method. And, you know, just want to kind of reiterate that moving data around in an application is just par for the course. You know, reading data out of here, transforming the data, sending it over there, sending it to the back end, sending it to the front end, you know, C sharp handling the data, JavaScript handling the data, SQL handling the data, you know, moving data around is, is programming. Okay. Working with the data is programming. And so when we're looking a little bit deeper at, at how data is moved around, um, I said this before the recording and I'm just going to repeat it. It's just really important to understand one of these fundamentals when you start introducing methods and you start sending data around, you can send data basically in one of two ways. And you'll hear this as an interview question. What does it mean to pass by value? Or what does it mean to pass by reference? Okay, so when you're sending data from, from one place to another, AKA from one method to another, um, this is a new concept uh, that, that again is kind of a common interview question. So I, I want to talk about it in a quick video. Now, let me go ahead and spin up just kind of a Windows form app and just a dummy app to do a little code. And I, I'm just putting this in a junk repo and I'll say passing data app one. So as we get Visual Studio loading here, um, right now, hopefully we have a firm understanding of what a variable is, as well as what a parameter is. Um, but if not, let's go ahead and just briefly go through this. Let's throw in a toolbox, a button, and this button We'll just say do something, do work, button, do work. And let's click a button, right? Keep in mind what's happening here is called generating an event handler. Okay, this is a method. This is a method with two parameters, okay, that is wired up to an event. The event is a button click. The user clicks the button. That's called firing the event. This is the method that responds to that event. Now we went ahead and um, made a private method. Uh, I'm gonna say private void do work. And I'm just gonna say int h. Okay, so let's just, for the sake of this, we're gonna work with the user's age and here in my button click, let me zoom in here and help you guys see a little better and minimize this. I'll say int age equals, let's just pretend we're asking the user, but uh, let's see, I think I'm that old nowadays. Um, so let's just pretend that we're getting this, th this input from the user, but I'm just skipping that step. Okay, and I'm gonna say do work. I'm gonna call my method and passing it the age variable. And so one question that I answered last week is we learned that when you're declaring a variable, that you only have to declare it once. Um, notice in this event listener, 
this integer is declared right here with this data type and then the identifier. Okay, then it's initialized with the value of 38. So it's declared here and we declared a parameter here. We've declared that twice. So one common question is Mr. G, is that the same variable or is that two different variables with the same name and a different scope? So is this one variable or two, right? And just out of, you know, take a guess, right? How many people would guess this is the same, the same variable? How many people would say it's two variables? How many, just take a guess, raise your hands. How many people would guess it's one variable? Raise your hand, I don't care what, which answer. Okay, we got some people. How many people say it's two? Two variables, raise your hand. Okay, well, the answer is it actually depends. Okay, it actually depends on the data type. Now, in this case, the data type is int. There is an answer. Okay, we have to begin to understand our data types are one of two categories. Value or reference. Well, you can see right here, the built-in value types include integral numeric types. Okay, so the answer to my question is actually two. Okay, if you're, what does it mean that these are two variables? They are stored in two different places in your computer's memory. Okay, so changing one variable would not modify the other. That's what it means that it is a value type. Value types, when you pass something by value, and, and again, this is a very common interview question. When you pass a variable by value is to say that all you're doing is making the value go from one variable into a separate variable, right? You're taking the value. Well, what's the value in this case? The value of 38. And you're basically copying the value of 38 and you're pasting it into this second age variable. So passing by value is um, anal an, an analogy, analogous, is that right? <laughs> analogous, geez, that was terrible. That's a big word. For passing, for copying the value and pasting into a second variable. Now, the, the, the question is, could I call this other variable something different? Absolutely. This doesn't have to be, they don't have to have the same name. I could call this int a. There's still two different variables. But what is this storing? Well, I could call this one user age. Okay. But all you're doing is copying the value of 38 stored in this variable and pasting it down here. So built-in value types, integers being one of them, as you'll see, the list is right here. These are the built-in types. Basically, all these, what are sometimes called primitive data types, integers, right, ints, uh, uh, um, shorts, bytes, right? Those are all integral types. Floating points, right? Those are gonna be your floats and your doubles bool and char these are the ones that basically pass by value okay so what that means is you're copying and pasting <coughs> let me let me add a label to just kind of show you that these are in fact two different variables i'm going to have a label here this label is not going to say anything i'm going to do label result okay now here label result dot text is equal to The age variable in the button click handler is age. So it'll start by saying the age variable is 38. I'm going to pass 
by value, which means it makes a copy and a paste. Again, whether you're naming this the same name or different does not matter. It does not matter. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. And I'm gonna say, but here it's not age, it's user age, right? So the value of 38 is sent down here and I'm gonna print out user age. Now watch, I'm gonna change user age. I'm gonna get a year older. I'm gonna go user age plus plus. Okay, and let me do a plus equals here. And let me do a little line break at the end of these so this is nice and clean. Okay, and I'm gonna append user got older in the do work method. The age variable in the, hold on, this will say do work method. And this is now user age. The user age variable in the do work method is 38. We then change it to 39. User got older in the do work method. It'll say 39. And then back label result dot text. And I'll say here after the method call, back in the button click, the age variable is still age. And let me do plus equals here. So we're appending. Okay. So we take a variable, we pass it by value, we change that variable in the, in the method, and it will remain unchanged in the event handler. Okay, that's, that's what it means to pass by value. Changing the variable in this method does not change it. Um, Okay, so the age variable in the button click handler is 38. The user age variable in do work is 38. User got older in do work, the user is 39. Back in the button click, the age is still 38. This is the definition of passing by value. And whether you pass by value or whether you pass by reference is purely by default based on the type of data that you're passing. Okay, if you're passing, again, what you might consider to be called primitive data types, integers, floats, chars, bool, okay, these, these data types that are, I don't know why they're called primitive other than to say they've just been around forever. Okay, um, there's probably some theory why those are called primitive data types. Um, but in C-sharp, we wouldn't call them primitive data types. We just call them value types, okay? These are value types because by default, they pass by value. How am I doing on time? 13 minutes. Passing by reference is the other option. Passing by value is one option. Passing by reference is the other. Dependent on the type of data that you're passing is how the data is sent over. Again, I think of passing by value as a copy and paste of the data from one variable into another. Okay, and, and effectively you have two different variables in RAM. So changing one does not change the other. Passing by reference is passing by reference is I already butchered that word once for cop cutting cutting and pasting into a second variable. Well, cutting and pasting is kind of like saying, "Hey, I'm just going to move it from one location to another." And, and it's now essentially the same variable, okay? So you could think of it as two different variables that point at the same data. Two different variables that point at the same data. Let me show you. Now, integers do not pass by reference, by default. Integers do not pass by reference. So what then are the data types 
that do pass by reference. Well, again, I'll go back to the Microsoft Docs. And you can kind of see here we haven't messed with classes, but we will. Okay, so when you make your own classes, these things will pass by reference. We haven't messed with interfaces yet, but we will. Delegates, records. We haven't messed with any of this stuff except for strings. And we've also messed with arrays. So I'm going to kind of kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to show you how to pass an array into a method. Now, arrays pass by reference, okay? And you have not had to pass an array to a method yet, right? So some, if, if you've done a lab and you are passing an array to a method, that you might have solved it one way, but that shouldn't have been necessary to this point. So let me show you what it's like to pass an array. So if this is gonna, if this method is gonna accept an array of integers called user ages. So now this method has one parameter and this one parameter accepts an array of integers and arrays pass by reference. Let's go ahead and make an integer array. Whoop. called user ages equals 18, 20, 22. And let's loop through our user each, for each age in user ages, label result.txt is, and let's just spit out the age. So I'll say in the button click, the ages are, and this will print out for each age inside of our array, it should print out, okay, let's put in a line break, but 18, 20, and 22, let's put in a little line break, so that's a little bit cleaner, okay. Now, to pass this array into my method, I'm going to call do work and pass it user ages. Again, it doesn't matter if you're using the same identifier or not. They're in a different scope. Both of these are essentially local scope to their own methods. Okay, so you can, you can share identifier names. Um, they're in different scopes. That's not a problem. Or if it makes you feel better, you can give them different names. Okay. Best practice is just to name your variables what they are. And since these are essentially the same thing, I'm gonna give them the same identifier. So I'm gonna pass this array down into do work, and I'm gonna loop through this method, and I'll say in do work, the ages are, and you're gonna see effectively we passed the array, and the ages are the same. Now let's go ahead and change one of the ages. Let's say user ages sub zero plus plus. And I will say label result dot text plus equals the first user got older. And let's in, in do work. And let's spit out that individual user age. User age sub zero. User age is sub zero. Okay, so let's uh, fire this up. Click. The first user got older and they went from 18 to 19. Now, because this is essentially, because it's an array, arrays pass by reference. Therefore, when you change the data in your method, you're effectively changing the data back in the button click as well. And so now after my method call, I'll say label result.txt plus equals, and I'll say back in button click, 
the user age is user ages sub zero. And you should see the effective result is that the data stays the same. User went to 19 and back in button click handler, the user is still 19. Okay. This is by definition the difference between passing by value and passing by reference. I would strongly encourage all of you to be familiar with these concepts. Most of our data types that we've learned so far are going to pass by value. The only thing that we've learned so far really that's going to pass by reference are our arrays. But as we continue to learn other data types, other data types also pass by reference. And again, you can look at the Microsoft Docs to tell you that. I'm going to stop the recording there and uh, pick back up in a little bit.